Aloha. So it's been a long, arduous journey since May 3rd when the Fisher 8 and all the other Fishers opened up in Leilani Estates. And although Fisher 8 is no longer erupting and the lava flow has, the lava river has crusted over, the disaster is still continuing. The lava flow is still going into the ocean. It is, however, a relief that we start seeing dark skies at night. I just met somebody in Kona. Yeah. I just met somebody in Kona who said that for the once in the, in the past three months, they didn't need to stay in a clean room where everything was sealed because the bog was so bad there. Of course, of course it's worse in Pune. Yeah, because the people in Pune have lost their homes. The loss of homes, it's deep. The wound in our psyche is huge. You know, we used to be able to dance at night over in Kalani Honua, which is now closed. We used to be able to go swim in the bathtub warm waters in Kapoho, which we cannot be there anymore. We used to play with turtles in the tide pools, which are now dead. These are the huge loss of psyche that we've had, but we are resilient. So what's the status? That's the reason why I'm here. We are recovering. We still need you, okay? According to the Disaster Assistance Recovery Team, in the past two weeks, we've had a 25% drop in the evacuee shelters. The, uh, according to Neighborhood Place of Pune, we've had a loss of, people have self-corrected, people have had their insurance claims paid, some of them, not all, huge amount, not all, but from a high of 700 home households that need a place to stay, it's now down to 550. I just got a commitment yesterday from DLNR Director Case that as soon as this is over, she's going to do her best to start access again in the Pahoa boat ramp, or at least find another boat ramp, so that our fisheries can open up again. The people on the other side of the island can't, don't know the loss of our beaches too. So I also got a commitment from her yesterday that as soon as this is over, she's going to try to figure out where, we, where the people can start accessing the beaches. So that's a good thing. So it's looking up. And, you know, and as you folks know, in the past week, the county has finally figured out that there's a $550 million request, which is huge, the largest in state history. And so we're going to need somebody that you folks are going to elect in the coming months, tomorrow in November hopefully a Democrat, because the ask is huge, the need is great, and we're going to need a Democrat for it. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you, Joy. Uh, I'm Russell Ruderman, state senator from Pune District. I want to first of all say good luck to all Democrats tomorrow, and thank you all for being involved and for running. Four years ago, I stood here at the same event and uh, explained our need for help in Pune because we had just gone through a hurricane and we're facing a lava threat. And, um, unfortunately, I'm here to ask again. You know, we have a crisis in Pune, everybody knows about it, but I, I hope to just take a minute to try to give a sense of the impact on the community and the magnitude of it that might not be apparent to people outside of Pune. It's not just homes and roads that we lost. We lost homesteads, we lost people's livelihoods, we lost a lot of farms and farm production, we lost a lot of our visitor business through uh, vacation rentals. All of these have a multiplying effect because the visitors aren't here, the farm produce isn't here. The people who used to live there lost their livelihood. So the economic impact is, is phenomenal. There's also, as, as Joy mentioned, there's a, a very big mental or psychological impact that's hard to explain. But there's been a loss of everything that you could call normal. Now, I know normalcy is a relative term when you talk about Pune District. I understand that. But we've lost our peace of mind along with everything else. 
For example, you know, a sense of community and social network is uh, recognized these days as one of the most important factors in our health. Well, we lost that. We lost our community. Uh, there's incredible stress for those living if, whose homes are lost or inaccessible. Some of them found places to live, but many of them are living on a in a garage or on a sofa. And even those who are living in a rental, but not their home, are away from where they poured decades of their life's work into and what used to be their home. It's hard to imagine. You know, for more than a thousand people, they just can't go home ever again. The home is gone forever. If you can imagine the five favorite places that you have in your life, in your neighborhood, picture those five places and try to imagine that four of them are gone. And it's not just that you're not allowed to go there. They're gone. They're gone forever. It has a profound impact on us. So we will be needing your help. And as Joy said, we'll be asking all of you folks for help. And those of you who win tomorrow, don't forget about our needs out here. I'm sorry to have to ask again. But when other neighborhoods get hit by disasters, we're going to be there for you. And we appreciate you folks being here for us. For those of you who may not win tomorrow, I thank you for running and encourage you to stay involved. It's not an easy business, and not everybody wins the first time or every time. So once again, for, mahalo for those of you who've traveled here, whether it's throughout the island or throughout the state. Thank you for coming to Hilo. Such a beautiful day in Hilo we have for you. Thanks for coming to the Grand Rally. Thank you for running. And th for those of you supporting a candidate, thank you for being involved. Mahalo nui loa. Please welcome back to the podium our Hawaii County Chairwoman, Margaret Willey. Thank you, Andy. I'm going to bring a little seriousness to this discussion. You know, these are desperate times, critical times. It's urgent times where I feel the world is depending on us, the planet is depending on us to shift the direction that we're going in. And we're here tonight, we're choosing our leaders, we're all one team. That's what we're doing, we're choosing our leaders, but then we all unite together and work on our shared mission and shared values. And just in terms of that, I bring your attention, our, our platform, our county platform, which is incorporated into our state um, platform, and go on, the, on site, go on to our website, the state website, and read it. It's inspirational. Figure out what you can work on. We need to be an example here. Um, we do have copies of it over on our Democratic table. Um, and we are going to work on different areas of legislation and efforts. So keep in mind, tonight's the talk, the talk. But after today, after tomorrow, it's walk the walk together. Hold hands and make a big difference. So I gather all of our strength and how important it is and how we here in Hawaii can be a model to the rest of the world. Thank you very much. Mahalo, Margaret. <clears throat> Malaysia, our next speaker is direct from Honolulu. Had a trouble getting a taxi from the airport, but she's direct from Honolulu, representing the Democratic Party of Hawaii. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a grand Hilo welcome to our state party chairwoman, Kelly Lopez. Aloha, everyone. I was hoping he wasn't going to bring that up. I, I did have trouble catching the cab here. Uh, love all you Uber folks, but I like to uh, stay with uh, the cabs just because I like to make sure I get here. So, um, you know, one of the things that's important that we're here in uh, Hawaii is it is the birthplace of so many things that are important to us as a people. And I think that's the most important thing to always remember is where our roots are is often where our heart is. And I think it's just wonderful that the Democratic Party really had its birthing here on this island. 
And I think it's wonderful that we, that the Democratic Party, every election year, comes here together to celebrate that origination. The thing that we have to remember is, is our history. I think we often lose track because so many years go by where we lose track of all the things that the Democratic Party was so critical in making occur and change for the betterment of the people of Hawaii. There's a reason it's the strongest party in Hawaii. It's because it's made a big difference. Doesn't mean we can't improve though. So I'm happy that the party has had a new influx of new energy and ideas for the party. The key piece behind that though, is that so many of you who have made Hawaii your home and have really deep roots, have never lost your spirit for why we're here and why we do what we do. And that spirit and energy and love for Hawaii has to be part of everything you do. So I too, like everyone else who's come up here, thank all of you who have volunteered and worked day in and day out, and it's gonna be a really difficult time and also a wonderful time to celebrate come Saturday night. No matter the outcome, you have put your effort behind the candidate that you believed would make the difference in your community, and that's all that really matters. Winning is wonderful, but being involved and working hard to make a difference, that's the real key. So thank you all for being here, but thank you mostly for the work that you've done to try to help, win, uh, help wonderful leaders take um, the lead here in Hawaii. Mahalo noi for all of your assistance. Aloha noi.